Hello everyone and welcome back to Death Stranding. This is episode 6. Last time we delivered some very, very precious items to Port Knot City, which we are currently uh, resting at and uh, we are soon to depart to Lake Knot City to acquire ourselves a boat from a private contractor, Fragile Express. I'm sure there'll be some jobs for us to get into though, which will be uh, which will be really fun uh, to to check out around this area before we leave. Uh, so I actually am intending to just have a uh, a brief look around. We'll see what we can do in a new area. See what new jobs um, are around. Uh, we'll have to see how we go. I might. Uh, do some do some off-screen delivery boy adventuring uh, and then we can uh, we can get ourselves this boat so we got to examine the table we got to crack open some bridges energy got to crack it open I currently do not have a can of my own but that is going to change at some point in the playthrough I'm sure I will find an appropriate time to also crack open a can with the boy Norman Reedus stamina increased by 10% it can be boosted by up to 25 which means I assume that is us just really just hammering down the cans uh, so I think we get a 20% and then we should get a 5% on the final one there we go all right drink three five percent we've got our Gordon glasses we've got our sunglasses it's time to it's time to leave. We've had three cans. I can't even imagine what's going on inside his digestive system right now. And his bladder. But let's have a look. Here we go. I think we've got a BB option. BB memory flash time. Don't know why we would ever skip these. It's so weird it even gives us the option. Brought you an astronaut. Mankind can go anywhere, even out of space. You'll be out of there in no time. And the second all this is over, I'm going to take you wherever you want to go. BB, uh, Mads Mikkelsen gave BP, uh, BB an astronaut, but the astronaut was from the brother, uh, of this guy that's here. The plot thickens. I don't know if that's just like a little throwaway line or whether that's going to have any significant plot relevance of, here's the Kojima character, Kojima Productions character symbol, um, in a, in a previous cutscene. That's, it's very interesting. I am not sure what that means, so we'll just have to let that one go, but standard orders. Ah, a supply request. Up for taking care of it? Thanks, Sam. And we could use more people like you. Supply requests are requests made by other players for weapons or equipment to be delivered to a specific location. Once delivered, these weapons, uh, these items will be provided to the player who made the request. Oh, that's really cool. So we got to go back to the distribution center for that. So it's an online mission. I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a give that a go. Let's help out Stephen, three one zero nineteen ninety four, shall we? It's literally just his birthday. Um, what do you reckon? Do you reckon Stephen got Death Stranding for his birthday on the third of October, and he's just having a lovely time playing the game right now, and he needs a PCC level one, a level one PCC. Uh, so let's 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 make one. Let's make it happen. Let's fabricate it because we haven't really needed to fabricate anything much. And then we've got our bike. It's already there. Let's go. Um, and that's and that's fine. Uh, I might actually store some stuff in my private locker. We don't need a hell of a lot of container repair spray. Uh, we've got a bunch of the hematic grenades that I could probably also store. You don't need heaps of those either, so I'll keep those two. Uh, that blood bag's almost out, so I might just get rid of that too. Get rid of that one too. Just have two on. 
And I'll get rid of one of the Mazer guns too. Because we don't need two of those. Okay, seems good to me. Take off a bit of stuff. Maybe I should have done auto cargo arrange, but it's good. Okay, so. Deliver a PCC to the distribution center, so we will be going back that way. I'm actually a little bit surprised that there are not more jobs at uh, Port Knot City to do around this area. It seems that they really do want you to just be like, all right, it's time to go to the Port Knot City Harbor. Just, just go for your life. Um, but I am going to take some time um, to drive around this area. I might pick up some lost cargo. I'll go and do this online mission and I'll just go for a drive, you know, just a peaceful drive on my bike um, and just, just play around for a while before we uh, eventually uh, head down to Port Knot City Harbour. Going straight into a cutscene on our way out, actually. for politics, is she? Oh, but don't worry. I'll find her. And I'll keep her real safe. <laughs> you see, I've come to understand the truth of the Death Stranding. Oh, there's so much you people don't know. The girl, for instance. She's not like you or me. Dooms ain't her thing. And she's more into destruction on a worldwide scale. An extinction entity. Oh, it's so hard to form connections when you can't shake hands. Fortunately, I've got a good connection to the other side. Now you... You're no bridge. To me, I'm bound to all of it. This world, that world, and our sweet little angel of death. Isn't this what you've been waiting for this whole time? 
a game over. Uh What the fuck is going on? Heads up, Sam. According to our damage assessments, it would only take a single void out to total Port Knot City. A single BT allowed to make contact with a civilian would be enough. We can't let that happen. You've got to deal with that BT right now. Dude, what? <laughs> uh, what the fuck? This is like a boss fight. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Me? Alright guys, I'm just gonna go do some nice deliveries. It's gonna drive and help out this dude online. That'll be so much fun. Meanwhile, this dude named Higgs was like, hey man, what if I what if I did this? What if I threw a giant fucking oily squid thing with a skull at you? What the fuck? I should have gotten more of these grenades. I literally put them in my private locker. I guess we can go and find some. Oh, there's some more. Oh my god, this is so cool, but what the hell? Okay, Higgs by Troy Baker. Oh, okay, problem. That's right, BB. That's right, BB. Oh, someone just died here. Oh, what the hell? What are you doing? I'm getting so confused by this guy. Is there another? There's another dude here that's just cheering me on. Is there another dude here just cheering me on? Is that is that what's going on right now? Because holy crap! <laughs> I think that's what's happening here. He picked the worst place to throw these things for me because it's right in front of me. Need this, thank you. Okay, there we go. I can't. Okay. Where are these grenades that I just picked up? Oh my god. I'm just gonna pick up the ones that are not online items. Pick up my actual game ones here. I don't know if this is going to work against it or not. Oh, hang on, there's a pay. Oh my god, look how many I have. I, I forgot, I can change pages. Oops. I can change pages. I don't know if you're actually there in real time or like what the hell's going on with you, but <laughs> I'm so confused about what's going on here. I'm gonna give you likes. I should have given likes to the other dude, but I was very confused. <laughs> this is the most bizarre shit of all time. I've got like I'm trying to fucking just throw all my anti-BT grenades at this dude. Meanwhile, I've got uh, random online players cheering me on and throwing shit at me while Troy Baker gave me a giant squid. I'm just, I'm so shocked. <laughs> but like, I fucking love it. It's like, what the hell is going on? So much cargo on me right now. Wow. Is that like 
Chiralium. Like similar to like Chiralium crystals. Yeah, like these crystals. Ah, oh, they're all the hands. Wow. Damn, that would have been one hell of a way to end last episode. I had no idea that there were boss battles in this game. That's so cool! Holy crap! <laughs> what the fuck? Nice! How about that, huh? Just faced a, my first BT boss battle. Wow. And now no cutscene afterwards, just back into gameplay? Oh, I've got a phone incredible. call. Simply incredible. For the first time in history, a human being has defeated a BT. Were you not a repatriate, I doubt it would have been possible. Not only does contact with your fluids pose no risk of triggering a void out, but in much the same way as your car is rejected by the beach, your blood can be used to expel BTs from our world and return them to the other side. You've given us hope, Sam. Perhaps we may yet be saved. Be proud, my friend. Emily's still waiting for you in the west. Head to your boat. It's ready. Get those supplies to Lake Knot City. We're just getting started. Dude, what the hell? Uh, that's one hell of a experience to start the episode off. We just had a first boss battle against the BT using our own blood to do so. And I, it's, it's great because we've been reading the, the data, the interviews, uh, like with Hartman, and he's told us about, he's talking about like the, the Egyptians believe that humans were composed of two elements, the heart and the car, the body and the soul. And so when he's, when Hartman is talking to me about this stuff, and he says car out of nowhere, I actually know what he's talking about. This is so bizarre, dude. Um, so we've got this whole area over here at the docks, and they want us to head there, but, um, again, I really am going to proceed with what I was going to do, which I was going to have a nice little peaceful, <laughs> peaceful little drive. I don't know where my, alright, my bike's here, we're good. My bike's here. It's fine. Um, we will be going that way to get onto the boat, because it looks like that's our, that's our boat there. There's our marker. Uh, so we'll do that, but I'm, I'm going to be heading this way. I'm going to do, I'm going to do some missions, um, and hopefully I don't run into anything like that that was uh, super unexpected uh, in the meantime <laughs> while I'm uh, on my journey. But holy crap, that was uh, very interesting. I need to store a lot of stuff. I guess I'll get rid of these because they're used. I think you can recycle these. Cycling's probably a good idea, but I'm just going to gonna offload them right now because we, we picked up we picked up a lot we picked up a lot oh, slightly slightly overwhelming uh, and a very unexpected thing we've got a whole bunch of chiralium too Time to go deliver that online PCC to our to our lovely to our lovely gentleman after a uh, brief encounter with Higgs, Troy Baker. I've got a memory chip over here to pick up. There we go. Deliver that memory memory chip soon as well. Very, very, very intriguing how he's like referring about stuff, and then Fragile was watching from a distance as well, and he could like mess with her, and he can teleport and zoom about and do all sorts of, uh, he can do all sorts of things, which is um, very interesting. So I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be encountering him more in my in my travels. He's got a BB of his own, a very interesting looking um, Obra deck as well. I I can't wait to see more, but for now. It's peaceful journey time. All right, we can deliver the requested supplies, the PCC. All right, let's complete the order. Delivering what was asked of us. Stephen, 
my man, you've got yourself a PCC. You've done it. I traveled far and wide to get that to you. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> oh, God. Deliver some cargo. What is with Sam? We do have an urgent crypto buyer delivery. I think we've already done it before because it does say shortest distance that we've already done this, I think. Or should it have a should it have a ranking if we've done it before? The Capital Not Distral Center is holding some crypto biotes we need delivered to the city. Crypto biote cells can accelerate blood production in humans. They may well be the hardiest organisms on Earth. Capable of enduring more physiological stress than any other. In harsh conditions, a crypto biote will eventually enter an metabolic state in a bid to survive. Unfortunately, shoving a bunch into a shipping container or submerging them in water for an extended period of time is enough to trigger this response. It takes weeks to coax them back to life if they're allowed to fully transition to this state. So you can't keep them cooped up for long. Make sure to reach Capital Knot City before it's too late. Nice. I don't remember doing this, so we do have an urgent crypto bio delivery that we can take to Capital Knot City, and it is an order for Sam. This is a somewhat unusual order. You're going to want to review the key points in the summary. Uh, order summary, blah, blah, blah. Do not submerge. So just make sure that it's like, do not submerge this cargo in rivers or other bodies of water. Water can enter the container and cause damage to its contents. Be especially careful when crossing rivers and streams. That's cool. That's a breathable container, remember? For its passenger's sake, don't immerse it in water. Yeah, we definitely have not done this before. Well, I'll just chuck it on my back then, right at the very top. So that will actually, that'll survive. Oh, where did it just put my crypto buy? Oh, no. Uh, I shouldn't have done auto arrange. Hold on. Uh, crypto buy it. Can I? And then, so I put it on the on the bike. Where's my bike at? Uh, and then I put this. Yeah, just put it on the very top. See that? Perfect. Now it definitely won't get submerged in water. It, we, that, but that also means don't go out in time for it. Delivery parameter. Don't go out in time fall. I think that's going to be a problem. Just got to recycle some stuff too. Also, another thing to note is uh, is Higgs smelled uh, Sam and got information that way. Higgs smelled him and was able to smell, I guess, the Bridget's burned body on him, as well as uh, being able to gleam further information from that. And I just think that is bizarre. But I mean, what can you do? What can you do? Um, yeah, I just think that's absolutely bizarre. Um, I do have... Uh, I've picked up another memory chip on the way here, so I do have a, a couple of two. I've got two to share. So we'll see what this unlocks. I am... Uh, a gog. You have my heartfelt gratitude. A gog? What is that as a describing word? I've never heard that before. Let me have a look. Uh, what is that? An adjective agog. Agog. Meaning. Very eager or curious to hear or see something. Interesting. Uh, the following data can now be viewed via cufflinks. Dawn slash silent poets and death stranding slash low roar. So that's music related stuff. That is music related stuff. In the memory chips. 
There you go. Yeah, it's just the first original album in 12 years from Silent Poets, whose song Asylums for the Feeling was used in the 2018 E3 trailer for Death Stranding. Hideo Kojima, uh, Hideo Kojima said uh, himself uh, that upon hearing the album Dawn for the first time, the image of Sam striding through the wilds came immediately to, to mind, and he subsequently contacted Silent Poets personally to ask them to be a part of the project. Upon the trailer's release, the public response was equally, equally enthusiastic, and Silent Poets hit the charts worldwide. Incidentally, the band is the solo project of uh, musician uh, Michiharu Shimoda, who also runs a catering company which looked after the Death Stranding team more than once during development. Another strand of fate at work. That's, uh, that's very interesting information. 12 inch of the soundtrack to the legendary video game Death Stranding... <laughs> I love just describing uh, your own video game in the video game as the legendary video game, Death Stranding, featuring tracks such as I'll Keep Coming and Easy Way Out. Listening to it is sure to send soul-soothing oxytocin surging around your system, and by the time it's finished, you'll be holding hands with anyone who happens to be beside you. Game director Hideo Kojima discovered the music of Low Roar by chance while browsing... Oh, while browsing in a record store in Iceland, and went on to use I'll Keep Coming in the first trailer for the game. A perfect example of the strands of fate doing their work. I love how there's little tidbits of information surrounding how the music got into the game as well. Like, that's also something that I think is, um, is, uh, is quite beautiful. But, uh, I've, uh, got a delivery to make. It's time to get back to Capital Not City. Back to Capital Not City uh, to deliver some crypto bites. Make sure I don't get them wet. Hey!
I've done some more deliveries and had, you know, had a fun time. It's been nice. I've just been taking a rest, you know, just massage my shoulders, just sitting down in the old Ludens fans place in the shelter because uh, I did some more deliveries uh, for Ludens fan and uh, I think, uh, or I'm assuming that when you uh, build up like a connection level, you're able to actually get a specific order for you because it seems that that's the seems that that's the case. So we can do a Ludens flag spear delivery to Port Not City. So fragile cargo. This is a somewhat unusual order. You're going to want to review the key points in the summary. So fragile cargo. You've been asked to deliver a Ludens spear flag from the Ludens fan shelter to Victor in Port Knot City. This is a unique and very precious item. It cannot be replicated using a chiral printer. There you go. So it's a Ludens flag spear. So we'll confirm that delivery. We'll take it with us. And then I, I think we're pretty good. Don't really need anything right now. All right, so heading back to we're heading back to Port Knot City because we are going to get on the boat. We're going to Lake Knot City because I've been enjoying this area for a really long time and just having some nice deliveries and building up connection levels and playing some tunes in the meantime. Uh, so I've got to just deliver two things to to Port Knot City. Um, Cargo is pretty good. We're we're running like pretty light. Uh, we've got some mail uh, over the time of delivering uh, some packages as well, so we'll have a read through these three. Uh, so, Victor Frank, re-establishing shipping lanes. How's it going, Sam? So you put Port Knot City back on the map, not bad. Folks around here seem pretty pumped about becoming part of the UCA and all that comes with it. Chiral printers, especially. You should have seen their faces when I gave them a demo. It was like conjuring equipment out of thin air. <laughs> 
Oh, and before I forget, I should also thank you for all the stuff you brought, and for taking care of that BT, too. You've given everyone a shot of inspiration and courage to carry on, and there's not much uh, that's more precious than that these days. There was a time when I was so shit scared of BTs that I just wanted to shut myself away and hide forever, but that's not an option. I know that now. We're on the same line here. Bridges isn't going to make it all the way west if we don't step up our game. But don't worry, we won't let you down. We'll get Port Knot City back on its feet in no time. I won't take up any more of your time. That's all I had to say. Anyway, a couple of the guys wanted me to write you to make sure you knew we all had your back. Come what may, we won't be throwing in the towel. Same goes for you, right? Now I've got the Ludens van, delivery to Port Knot City. So we can see that our connection levels are pretty good for most of them. I need to do a couple more deliveries for Jake Wind to get him to five stars. But it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long to get the connection level um, that high, which is cool. Uh, order delivery to Port Knot City, which is the one that we've just picked up. Sorry, Sam, I know you're a busy man, but I need you to deliver something to a guy named Victor in Port Knot City. It's only right that he has it, not me. And it's unique, too, so chiral printing's not an option. If you could do the honors, I'd be super grateful. Likes. To the man who delivers, I'm sorry. Sam. First off, sorry for calling you a newbie last time. You're Sam Bridges, a freaking living legend, and there I was talking to you like this was your first day on the job. Dead man was none too happy about me treating you like this was your first rodeo. Man, do I feel like a dumbass. If you're the one helping us to expand the network from coast to coast, we're in safe hands for sure. Guess the day America rises from the ashes might not be so far off after all. So you were a member of Bridges before you were a porter, and now you're back in the shit after, what, 10 years? Suppose that means you outrank me, though I'd reckon you're not the type to care about all that. Out of curiosity, have you been using your private room to kick back and relax while listening to some music? The director asked us to hook you up with some tracks from Low Roar, said there's no better way to unwind after a hard day. I checked them out myself, and I have to say he knows what he's talking about, really got the juices flowing, oxytoxin too. Uh, my favorite track, my favorite's a track called Pop Virus, and I think you might like it too. Apparently it's about a virus that destroys everything people think they know about music, allowing something completely new to be created in its place. Kind of like what you're doing with America, right? Taking a busted foundation and rebuilding it to make something better in the long run. Give it a listen when you have the chance. I love how there's like, uh, there's a tiny bit of like lore story information in there that you still can gleam from like just a normal email. Like, talking about coming back after 10 years and stuff like that. Into bridges. So those are the three emails that we achieved. We get on our bike, and uh, we're going to drive uh, all the way back. We're going to drive all the way back to Port Knot City. I will not need to take any of that cargo with me. This is like... This is like a permanent time fall BT spot at the moment, so it's pretty it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough, so I'll try we're gonna try our best to get through here. Honestly, I will say that I struggled to get through BT segments on the bike. Definitely struggle to get through BT segments on the bike. And that's because I'm like, what do I what do I do? Leave the bike behind? Leave the bike behind? I don't want to do that. We're just using we're just using the Cobra deck. In the direction that it's pointing and I'm just avoiding the direction that it's pointing and I think we'll be fine. Just trying to get out of time for. Close one like that. Need to get out of the rain so I can soothe baby. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sliding. Let me get out of this rain. 
I gotta soothe my BB. That was stressful for the. That was stressful for the boy. There you are, buddy. You'll be fine. I'm gonna soothe you up so you don't die. But yeah, the BT. The BT segments are a little bit rough because, uh, especially especially on the bike, it makes it difficult. You can get to a point where you can just push through. It definitely works better as like those like the sneaking segment on foot, and you get your little blood grenades, and you mess them up. I love how that looks, but yeah, it's it's definitely definitely a challenge, especially when it's just like it makes sense. Like it's a no-brainer to use the bike. You know, it's a no-brainer to use the bike. It saves a lot of time. Wonderful. New interview data required. Repatriates and void outs. Nice. Hologram data for Victor Frank and interview data on oxytocin. Nice. Fuck me. There anything the legend can't do? Thanks. Private room's all yours if you need it. Okay, let's check on BB. We got some new mail as well. Yeah, hey, doing little buddy. Oh. I feel bad when I end up putting him in, <laughs> putting him in danger because I'm like, we're just riding the bike through goddamn time fall storms and BBs. I got a new thing. Look on my table. I got a new figure. I guess that's for the. Uh, that's the uh, the boss that I defeated. Check that out. That's cool. Let's have a read of our terminal. Okay, so we got some more mail and some more data. So let's read this from Victor Frank. Thanks for Igor's flag. I can't believe you brought me that Luton's flag. I owe you one, Sam. Gotta say, I didn't think I'd ever see it again, especially since Igor made it himself. Some stuff just can't be reprinted, you know? Igor truly believed that Luton's were gonna save the world. He dreamt of the day that we'd break out of our little worlds and start seeing the big picture. Bigger than America and the Earth, he was looking beyond the chiral clouds towards outer space. The f this flag was a symbol of all that, of that future when Luton's would travel to a whole other planet, stake a claim, and call it their own. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's so much more than a toy. When I hold it, it's like I'm holding my brother's dreams. I can never thank you enough for that, Sam. That's cool. Alright. Interviews. Oxytocin. Two and a half years ago, back before the stranding, people didn't rely on smart drugs like oxytocin so much. Probably because they weren't so damn isolated. Me and my brother Igor, uh, we got separated from our folks after the first void out. Shit was crazy. I was just a kid, but he was even younger. Too young to have to go through all that. Spending night after night holed up in those ruins, it was rough. But we had each other. We held each other close to stay warm and it made things better. Docs tell me that Oxy is doing its thing. Uh, the hormone the body releases when we touch each other. It's why mothers form bonds with their kids when they hold them and other stuff like that. But with the comms networks not what they were, it's more dangerous than ever to go outside, and even not, uh, and even when you got other people around, they don't seem too keen to make physical contact. A collective aversion due to an ingrained fear of BTs and void outs or so, I've been told. Add it all up, and you've got yourself a people that's isolated, scattered, stressed out, and insecure. So we've got no choice but to supplement our oxy levels. Fill the void left by physical affection with chemical TLC. Pretty fucked up, am I right? I know we used to go to war over race and religion and all that back in the day, but that had to be better than living like this. Repatriates and void outs from Hartmund three years ago. 
have come across a number of old reports which make mention of humans who have certain powers, powers which have led them to them becoming known as repatriates. As we know, when a human and a BT come into contact, a void out results, which is analogous to what physicists would term an annihilation event. These events occur when matter meets antimatter and mass is converted violently and abruptly into energy. The process is highly efficient, uh, though some energy is lost to the production of neutrinos. Similarly, in a void out, vast amounts of energy are released, resulting in destruction on a devastating scale which leaves behind a large crater. Void outs triggered by contact with repatriates, however, consistently result in smaller craters. It is suspected that this is because energy is lost to the beach in the same manner that it is lost to neutrino production in a conventional annihilation event, and that, in the case of repatriates, the amount of energy lost is particularly high. That said, how the repatriate's body survives intact is a far bigger mystery, and on one I w and one on uh, which I will refrain from commenting until I have had the chance to examine one in the flesh. One notable repatriate is Sam Strand, a former member of Bridges I, who left some years ago. Oh, sorry, Bridges the first, I think, former member of Bridges one. I thought I read that as the, as the I. Former member of Bridges 1 who left some years ago and has been making his way in the world as a porter ever since. I do hope I get to meet him someday, considering how invaluable he could be in advancing our understanding of the true nature of beaches and the Death Stranding. There you go. Alright. Well deserved rest in our room after a crazy time fall storm that uh, put put BB in a in a particular bad way get rid of this exclamation mark we'll change our color scheme we got new uh, new color for our oh we can change the lens color look at that that's actually pretty sweet I like that cool all right and uh, as always we are resting in the room we're about to engage on a journey on a boat to, to Lake Knot City so I think we should we should definitely make sure we should definitely make sure that we are drinking our energy drinks um, for the journey ahead and I should get one myself Guys, you may be able to take, you may be able to take Monster Energy Drink out of the game, but you cannot take the Monster Energy Drink out of me! <laughs> they removed it from the game. But I've got it myself. Me and Sam, just having a delicious... A delicious breakfast. There you go, Kojima. I'll carry on your product placement for you. <laughs> Alright. We'll just drink two to 20% stamina boost. Let's get out of here. Time to leave with BB and head to Lake Knot City. I wonder how the terms came about for um, putting monster in the game. Whether Kojima was like, "Hey man, you cool if I?" Uh... <laughs> hey man, you cool if I put monster in the game? Can we make that work? I'm surprised there's no like monster stickers on my on my bike because it's hardcore sports, extreme. Riding on my bike deliveries. Who knows? Okay, so uh, we have not had a chance to explore over here yet because this is where we need to go. So this is where that battle occurred. We've got a bunch of grenades and blood bags we can still pick up. So I might pick these up because I have used most of my grenades. Or, and recycled the ones that were that were broken, so I'll pick these up for our journey. As well as some blood bags. <clears throat> I wonder if we'll be able to take our uh, take our bike with us on the boat, or whether that'll get that'll get left behind. That'll be very interesting. Ooh, there's a memory chip over this way too. 
I love how the jump works on the bike when you're boosting. Like, you can actually get so much air, it's it's actually great. And then accidentally crash into a shipping container. But, I love it. Gotta get there myself. Thanks for the smiley face. Alright. There we go. Memory chip acquired. I'll probably pop in the uh <laughs> Okay. Tries to climb on bike, just falls on my ass. Alright, shall we try that again, Sam? Thank you. Alright, we'll cash in that memory chip um, when we get to when we get to Lake Knot City. We don't need to go back to our terminal yet. We're in no rush to check the data yet. Pick this up. <sighs> So I guess if we look at this, if we look at the map, I guess we're getting on here and then it's a part of the map that we, part of the region we haven't, we don't know yet on this map anyway. I'm very excited to see um, where we're going to be heading, like Lake Knot City and like if that's going to be like a nice change of environment, like visually and stuff. I mean, it looks like we might just be going over there. So it might not be a huge change for environment. I don't know how long the how long the journey is gonna be. <sighs> Alright, can I make can I make the jump? Can I make the jump up here? Oh yes we can. Gonna catch a ride on that boat, Sam? Before you do, be aware that you'll have to leave behind any cargo you haven't gotten around to delivering. It'd be a shame to abandon something important, though, especially if you were close to finishing a run. My advice, put that stuff in your private locker in Port Knot City. Or, if you're feeling responsible, you could just delay your boat trip until you've tied up loose ends. It's your call. Cool, so they're basically like, make sure you've done your side missions and your deliveries before you leave. We're fine. We've done, we've done many. We have done many deliveries. <laughs> Snap. You came through then. I don't break that easy. Name notwithstanding. There's a delay in you saw that asshole too, right? Higgs in audio. He's the leader of a separatist group. Seemed to me like he was controlling that BT. That's a level seven for you. Higher, maybe. Seems like you know a lot about him. Used to work together. Guess you could say we had a contract. You did business with terrorists? Whoever pays, huh? He wasn't like that back then. So what's your angle? You want to save the world or you want to fuck it all up like him? I wish I... I just wish things were different, all right? Here's all right. Wow. Fragile Express. I'm going to try fix the audio sync issues. Um, once I get back into gameplay, I'll restart the game. Don't worry. She still floats. Come on. We're the only cargo left. Ooh, new episode. Episode 3. Fragile. Okay. Interesting. Cool. So we can resume the game. Uh, yeah, I will try. We'll see if the... Maybe if it pushes itself into a new episode, it might fix it. Um, 
I'm not sure because uh, I'm I have restarted the game from from scratch um, playing this playing this session so I don't know why there would be an audio sync issue it's not me like leaving the console in standby or anything like that so I might just do a bit of a restart and we'll see how we go we're on a boat though I told you before, Sam. The past just won't let go. Listen, I have something to ask of you. It has to do with that asshole, Higgs. Am I asleep? Do you remember? It's almost time to go, Sam. I had no idea until you told me. No idea that I was alive. Living is no different from being dead if you're all alone. I don't want to go home. Here, it's a dream catcher. Wear it when you sleep, and I'll keep the nightmares away. I'll always be with you. Did you forget how to go home? Come on. 
I'll take you halfway. And then you can do the rest by yourself. Better now? I'll be waiting for you on the beach. Come and find me. We used to play together a lot in this place. You brought me here. I couldn't make the trip on my own. So long as you have a body to return to, you can't come and go as you please. So you can't just come back east through here? Not until you make us whole again, Sam. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. Come and find me. Um, all right. While we're while we're at this 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 point, it's probably a good moment to give some thoughts before it jumps into maybe another cutscene. Is um, Amelie does not age. She is stuck on the beach. The beach is supposed to be the other side. If I am understanding right, which I probably am not, uh, is Amelie... Well, Amelie was just saying that she was alive, but I'm like, is she alive, but also stuck in limbo? Like, is she on the other side, essentially dead, but still alive? I don't... I don't know. Because Sam has grown up. He was a child there, but Amelie was exactly the same. She could only walk him halfway, and then he would have to go the, the rest of the way on his own. She's stuck on the beach. Hmm. And we're gonna go see her, but then she needs to come back, but then she's in captivity? Because from the beginning of the game, she's like, she's being kept at a, at a facility somewhere. I, um. <laughs> okay, I'm like... Parts of this I'm getting and I'm understanding. There's other parts that I'm like, hmm. I hope that I figure this out later on. It's obviously intentionally kind of a bit cryptic and all over the place with uh, a lot of the uh, stuff that's being used. Uh, story story beats and, and plot points and, and such. Like, was that even like, is that a, a dream uh, that Sam was having like, when, when he'd fallen asleep and he's just kind of had that? Uh, encounter in his head is there like a psychic connection between the two that they can communicate uh, while he is asleep I don't know something that's interesting is when you do have when Sam is resting and you sit there and stuff he does actually mumble and say stuff to himself maybe perhaps he's having a conversation <clears throat> or doing something like having a dream or a nightmare or something with Amelie because he's got the dream catcher it's supposed to keep the nightmares away so I think that, like the fact that there is a dream catcher that has to do with dreaming might have something to do with it but let's resume the game we head head back into the, the cunt scene there is still that unfortunate audio uh sync issue but it's it's not terrible which is good at least i can hear the dialogue it's not killing anything for me um but super super interesting so we need to get to the beach but we can't get there on our own is what uh is what sam is saying yeah, we're we're asleep. See, that was, we were having a dream. I don't know how you sleep. Need to pick me up? She keeps offering those things. Welcome to Lake Nut City. Sam doesn't want any of it. What? Nothing. Let's go. I'm worried that BB is just like sitting there. I'm like, man, he doesn't he's not even tied down. What if he just slips and falls off the edge while you were sleeping? I don't understand why he couldn't just be plugged into your suit right now. 
Like, what if there was, like, what if you hit, like, a big wave while you were snoozing, and then BB just slides right off? <laughs> this cargo is from Port Nut City, bound for Lake Knot. I'll leave these up to you. The dispatch terminal is up ahead. In the meantime, I've got some business to attend to. Later, alligator. <laughs> Okay, we've automatically put BB on our chest now. Good. Cool. So the, the lake ride was actually longer than I thought. We actually went for quite a while. Um, so we actually, there is actually potential for a cool new area to, to check out. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, so that's the, that's the big ass Fragile Express boat. Oh, no, actually, that's Port, that's Port Knot, right? Hmm. Ooh, there's some, there's been some, some void outs here. Okay, we're on a, we're on a new map, so, cent central region. So I can't even see where we came from. But I'm assuming it's just over that way. Like. Yeah, so, I mean, that looks like... That could be Port Knot City, right? We just kind of crossed over here. Right, let's pick up. Let's pick up our stuff. The sperm and eggs. It's still with us. We've still got to deliver the sperm and eggs. Pick up everything else, please. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I just love picking up everything so quickly. All right. Love it. I love these environments, and something that I wanted to something that I wanted to mention as well is how goddamn good the detailing is on uh, on character models and stuff. So um, when Sam was having a snooze before, like there was like a specific moment where I could see like like hair follicles, like dandruff type stuff in his in his hair, and like the texture on his skin, and obviously just like the sheer fact that it's like. Uh, you know, it can, the motion capture and facial capture work on the the actors that are in, that are in this game is is impeccable. Like it, it's the way that it captures expressions as well. Like if I go in here and do uh, uh, Sam's expression, like the, all the different ways that it's like captured their <laughs> their faces is uh, is is great. And they can change their change their pose if you want. The the photo mode the photo mode's really good by the way. <laughs> The the photo mode is is absolutely incredible. Like <laughs> the amount of stuff that you can do in here and the amount of poses that they they're going for is 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 great. I I love this. I love this a lot. Look at look at look, look how good this is. <laughs> Jump punching. Like the there's such a such a sheer amount of poses here and uh, you can ha you can turn BB on. You can turn BB on if you want as well and put him in there. And change his uh, change his expressions as well. He's he's yelling out of it. I just I don't know. I, this is uh, <laughs> the the detail the the detail of that is uh, is is great, right? I'm a I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the of the photo mode. It's great. Especially in like the the gorgeous environments, and what you can do, and you can put yourself in combat, and like just like how you can arrange things, I think is is really neat. And I'm loving the work on the uh, interior environments as well as the um, as well as the outside environments. It's very very beautiful.
William Lake dropped cargo. So uh, I love how like their their last names are almost always like associated with their uh, their places. Jake Wind at the wind farm. Just this is the way that the lighting works at night is uh, is really really good. So all the dis all these distribution centers tend to look the same, which is cool. It gives it some familiarity as you know what you're getting into. So I'm assuming we're gonna connect. We'll connect this place with our chiral to the chiral network, and then we'll be able to see everybody else's notes and messages and stuff like that. I wonder if we'll get access to these other like panels and if they actually mean anything, or whether we only just it will only just have access to this. Maybe because this is like bridges and maybe another one is for like, I don't know, Fragile Express or something like that. Like we, we only have access to this one. I don't know whether that actually has any any story purpose or anything or whether we'll just unlock them later. But we have a bunch of stuff to deliver that we picked up along the way. So let's return the lost cargo first. Hey man, how's it going? Guys like you make me proud to be part of Bridges. Thank you, Sam. Cool. We're getting, we're getting a purple star on the miscellaneous one, by the way, by now. <laughs> Until the next delivery, then. Stay safe. Alright. Let's get you connected to the, to the network, my man. Requested cargo, there we go. So, I got sperm and eggs, medicine, and anti BT weapons. Anyone order some sperm? We must preserve the human race. Welcome, welcome. We were watching your boat the whole way. I hate to be a hard ass, but I've got to ask everything you're transporting of boat board? Nothing dangerous or illicit. I'm sure they checked you on the way in, but I'm gonna have to take a second look. All clear. Not picking up anything unusual. Cargo looks great too. Nice. Been a while since we got some of this stuff. We don't get come very often. Ceramics can now be used at all UCA affiliated facilities. The amount of materials that can be used in Lake Knot City has increased. Ceramics. Cool. Sorry for the hassle. Keep 
can't be too careful these days. Oh, we heard you were carrying a Cupid. That right? You're clear to lick us up. Let's do it. There we go, we can see where we are. Yeah. So we went up that way. That's cool. New strand established. Lake Nut City has joined the UCA. William Lake has provided design data for the following smoke emitting decoy cargo. New interview data uh, acquired preppers and the lake at ground zero. Cool. So we're finally on the network. It's a long time coming. We won't hold anything back. Capital Not Studio will get everything. If all this info sharing makes everyone safer, I'm all for it. You can bet I'm not the only one here who feels that way. I suppose it was better when Bridges One first came this way. At least I don't remember terrorists and BTs making our lives difficult back then. Well, be careful out there. The world's not what it used to be. And thank you. Oh, hello. Ground Zero, Sam. Congratulations. And thank you. It'll only get harder from here, though. When we first came through, it was different. Peaceful. The three cities out there, Lake, Middle, and South Knot, were all on board with our plans for reconstruction. Fragile Express was contracted by all three and kept supplies moving and people connected. But that all changed a year ago, when the Separatists carried out their attacks. One took out Middle Knot City. They detonated nukes from the old days. Half of South Knot City went up in the other. Casualties were devastating. Wow. Bridges doesn't have the resources to link up the remaining cities on its own. We need to secure the support of everyone, even those who want nothing to do with the UCA. Impossible as that may seem. The situation has changed dramatically since Bridges One first went west. The destruction of Middle Knot in particular forced us to adapt a new strategy. It's like Amelie said, we don't have the time or resources to construct another knot on that scale. That's why we've taken to cutting deals with preppers and the like. Our only recourse is to utilize their shelters to bolster the strength of the network. It takes a special kind of person to live out here on their own. The kind that'll tell us to fuck off if we ask him to join the UCA. Oh, we know. No one's expecting them to say yes up front. But even if they don't like dealing with most people, they got on okay with Fragile Express. Don't tell me. You want us to use her credentials to get in good with them? Bingo. She's agreed to it, too. And in exchange, she gets... Nothing, really. A chance to get back at Higgs, I suppose. I can't blame her for warning one. He took everything from her and then some. Time heals some wounds, but not hers. The work ahead won't be simple or easy, but it needs doing. Get some rest for now. We'll talk more later. I wonder what the significance is of Amelie's hologram being golden. I wonder, is she what she even is, really? We haven't seen her in person. I mean, hell, I don't. We haven't even seen Hartman and Mama in person. We've only seen them as holograms. We've only seen Dead Man and Die Hard Man uh, as other real people. Oh, hello. We are on the beach, and we're wearing we're wearing the Dreamcatcher, right? Hebrew. It means not in old words. You can also use it to count stuff. I had a knot when I make a friend. Okay. 
Then how about I add another knot every time I see you? That's why she's got that. This must be very important to you if you were able to bring it here. Very special. It is special. I made it for you. I'll treasure it, Sam. Something to eat? Why do you keep doing that? You're in I my private you. room. That's your best man. No. I mean, why are you here? Got a delivery for a porter. You're gonna need this on the road ahead. This will ID you as an associate of Fragile Express. It's woven from my blood and chiral crystals. Think of it as a kind of bond. Preppers around these parts won't give you trouble so long as you've got it. We were the only people making deliveries out here. This was our territory. Until Higgs fucked it all up. Me, the Express, our reputation, all of it. Now you want to fuck them back? On your own. I'm not on my own. The cave. Port Knot City. Next to your bed. So far apart, yet somehow we keep meeting. All that BT country in between where I should have been caught in a void out. Yet here I am. She's like, we keep meeting. You can use the beach. I have a beach. You've got yours. I've got mine. I use it to jump across space. I can't conjure up BTs the way Higgs can, but I can go after him, chase him to the beach. Problem is, everyone's got their own way in. I'm only allowed to pass through the beach I know and understand. I'm sure you've heard the term multiverse. You all right? The jumps take a lot out of me. Set my blood dry. Oh, that's why she eats cryptobiotes so much. You're going to Edge City, right? Place is full of terrorists. But if you're dead set on it, then you're gonna have to deal with heat sooner or later. Look, I make deliveries, killing monsters and terrorists. It's not what I do. What if we did it together? I could use my power to help you. We don't have to want the same thing to be on the same side. I could send you across my beach to any place the Kyrelians thick enough, any place connected to the Chiral network. And what do you expect in return? I expect you to think it over. Here. Call it an incentive. And call me if you need me. This will keep us connected. See you when I see you. <laughs> Dude. Is she telling us that, uh, is she telling us fast travel? Is is uh is there an actual in-game? There is <laughs> there's a there is a lore reason for how fast travel exists in this game. That is hilarious. I love that. Jumping with Fragile. Fragile can instantly transport you to any distro center or safe house within the area covered by the chiral network. Any items you are carrying will be placed in a private locker. Oh wow. Fragile's just like, yeah, like, I can... You ever heard of multiverses? Yeah, so I could basically just... <laughs> so each beach, it's like almost a different universe. She only understands her own beach. She can travel through hers, but she can send Sam through her beach to different locations. 
Um, I'm just, I'm wondering if there's a cost to that because when she jumps, it drains her blood. That's why she's always obsessed with cryptobiotes. That makes sense. Why she keeps going? Hey, want a snack? Want a snack? Want a snack? How did I end up in your room? We keep meeting, Sam. How does that happen? I'm certainly not teleporting everywhere. But um, oh, that's so cool. So she's given us her little umbrella, and we can use that to Mary Poppins our way into other distro centers, uh, which is amazing. That's really neat. And we have... Look at this. Oh, we can eat. There you go. Because now we have our own little crypto bio little, uh, little jar, I'm assuming that it'll drain our blood if we fast travel. So maybe if we have a blood pack or enough crypto biotes, we can... Uh, we can offset that. Why are they? Why are their faces kind of cute, even though they're disgusting and bug-like, you know? <laughs> God, that's... Why is it blurry? Let me zoom in on him. <laughs> oh, this game is fascinating and so bizarre. It's just like... Yeah, so there's these beaches. You've heard, you just heard of multiverses, right? So basically, there's a multiverse and there's a beach and then this this your sister is on a beach and you can interact with her physically but she can't leave. You can even give her an item. You can give her an object. Um... So that's why she's got the network, uh, the necklace. Sam, uh, Sam gave it to him. <laughs> Dude, I, I think, I think I'm in love with this game. Oh my god, it's so good. It's like the story is like overwhelmingly confusing, but like the gameplay is really fun, and I just like love how it all feels. Like it just feels good to play. I don't know, um, but we've got we've got obviously got a lot lot ahead of us uh, to to check out. Uh, so let's read some interviews and in the and the and the emails that we've uh, acquired before we decide to head on out. Uh, so we're going to Edge Not City because two of the other big ones were actually destroyed. I think that's really cool. Um, and we now need to wear our little Fragile Express thing to make friends with people who will uh, otherwise hate us. So that's that's super. Super interesting. So we're actually going to start meeting um, different factions. This is actually something I was wondering if would happen because so far we've only really seen bridges and mules, and mules are just enemies in the land. You know, there's no that there's no dialogue with them. So I was actually wondering if we would get like these different factions because you know we've only met one person in Fragile Express, and that is the top dog. Um, so this will be this will be really cool. So William Lake, don't keep the others waiting. Don't keep them waiting, huh? Hey Sam, can't tell you how good it was to see you coming over the water on that boat. First time we've welcomed so much as a turd in what must be two years now. Some folks were even saying everything east of Ground Zero must have been wiped out completely. The occasional message drifted in from HQ, but people, not a one. We'd half given up on the Cupid ever being finished on the second exhibition, uh, the whole shebang. And then you show up with a working Cupid to boot, our knight in shining armor. Uh, sorry, don't mean to sound like I'm not grateful. I am, more than you know. Every single person here was waiting for someone like you to come along, and there'll be more waiting west of here. A lot more. You'd best go find them. Love how it's like, don't keep the others waiting. Metal Gear Solid reference. And we're at Ground Zero. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5. Ground Zeroes. Kept you waiting, huh? Uh, we got a memory chip. Um, we haven't turned it over yet, so... Oh, there it is. Uh, but it's unidentified, so we'll, we'll need to we'll need to hand it over hand it over uh, to the terminal. Oh, I should have done that before the thing. That's fine. Um, we'll do it now when we leave. Okay, preppers, fragile. Two years ago. Give me a sec. That's the door. Just been having a lot of postal deliveries delayed, so it's really nice when I finally have something at the door. Isn't isn't it great? I've, I got my own my own porter, my own Bridges Express. Finally, finally delivering stuff. We've had some really big delays with postage and shipping in lockdown. If only you know, if only I had Sam Porter Bridges, the legend himself, to to deliver me my my vinyl records. You know, that I like to that I like to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> then I then uh, everything would be everything would be just fine. Um, 
just love that we're having delivery problems in a game that I'm playing about about delivery. So I thought it was fitting. Um, Midlake recommend listening to that artist. I've put a couple of their songs in my uh, in my Death Stranding playlist. They're very nice. Uh, very good to listen to. Been fans of those for, fans of them for years, and I finally was able to track down um, a nice, good, good condition second uh, hand copy of that album because it's very hard to come by. <laughs> um, sorry for getting off track. Uh, let's read the interviews. So um, we were reading preppers. Um, when I was a little girl, my father told me that preppers were people who decided long ago that they couldn't trust their nation to be there for them anymore. That the bonds between us had grown weak long before the Death Stranding. We once had a network spanning the whole wide world that could send items from anywhere to anywhere and connect anyone with anything. But we, still we were isolated. Still we were alone. Some liked it that way, and even wanted more. They wanted walls along their borders, wanted to turn away refugees and outsiders. Some even wanted new nations all their own. They began to see the state as an enemy of their freedom, not a protector of it. The ones most far gone, they didn't trust the country to defend them if something went really wrong. War, terrorism, natural disaster, you name it. So they built shelters and stocked full of supplies in preparation for the worst. And then the worst happened. The Death Stranding, a.k.a. COVID-19. <laughs> America ceased to exist and their shelters became their homes, where they would live and they would die. But while they'd prepared, they hadn't prepared to live there forever, which is why they wound up relying on us as couriers so heavily. Uh, my father and I didn't want to go back to the old America. We didn't want a country that pushed people apart. We wanted one that brought them together, that allowed them to support one another. And that was what we tried to work toward. The lake at Ground Zero, two and a half years ago. When I first laid eyes on the lake here at Ground Zero, I was blown away by the sheer size of it. I never imagined anything could be so huge. This was just after the Death Stranding, and not many people had seen the craters up close yet. Back when I was still living with my parents and my brother on the East Coast, an explosion like nothing the world had seen before tore a gaping hole in the heart of America. There were all kinds of rumors floating around at the time that it was a meteor, that it was a nuke dropped by another country. I was just a kid, but even I could tell the adults didn't have a clue, so you can imagine how I felt. And then we found out there had been other explosions, not just here in America, but the world over. By the time we learned they were void outs and what void outs were, the country was pretty much done. But hey, that was then, and this is now, and things are looking up. I just got told my kid brother's still alive. Word is he's heading up a corpse disposal team in... <laughs> Corpse disposal team in Capital Not City. Handled his shit well enough to get picked for the second expedition. Three more years and he'll be out here with me. Can't wait to see him again. And that was two and a half years ago. He was six months out of retirement, baby. That's a shame. Okay, so those were the uh, interviews. Now I need to uh, now I need to also go and deliver that memory chip so we can see uh, what that is all about. So the fragile jump. Let's just take a look. Ah, there we go. So we can see. So eastern region, central region, right? So, but I love I love that. This is what I was talking about with like the last names, right? So capital not city is the eastmost city. Nick Easton, right? Um, Benjamin Hancock. He's the one that asked us to deliver the sperm, and he has cock in his name, right? That's intentional. Um, Victor Frank. He r really likes Frankfurters, and that has to do with being a dock worker. Yes. See? Every, th every name. Every name has a purpose, guys. Every name. Maybe not every day. <laughs> Most of them. Like Jake Wind and uh, and Mr. Lake Man. Yeah, it, perfect. Exactly. All right, let's let's uh, let's leave the private room because we will stay. We're going to stay in this region, obviously. We don't need to go back to the East Coast yet. BB memory flash time. Steady. He's been 
he's been unplugged. He's been unplugged. He's uh, he's leaving. That's interesting. He's leaving. Sam, access the Lake Knot City delivery terminal. <laughs> Sam, to review, your present objective is to extend the Cairo network from Lake Knot City to South Knot City. To that end, you'll need to utilize prepper shelters as way stations. Frankly, it won't be easy. Fragile's tried to get some of them on board, but you know how preppers are. More than a few won't want anything to do with the UCA. So we've got to prove to them they're better off with us. Figure out what they need and what we can provide, and then deliver. Do that, and they just might agree to join us. All right, get to it. The list of orders is on the terminal. Okay. Um, fabricate equipment. An empty container tagged with a fake ID, AKA decoy cargo. Could be useful for fooling folks who can't get enough of other people's deliveries. Wow, okay, so that makes sense. You put it on for a, for a mule, and then you smoke them out. That's actually quite cool. Okay, let's have a look. What is for Sam? Okay, we've got three important ones to do here. Someone to an engineer, to an elder, and to craftsman. So three separate locations. So it looks like that these are like little garages, um, similar to maybe like the Luden's fans' little like shelter. So we head to those shelters instead. So we'll obviously take on all three. Let's listen to the briefings for them. Your destination is a shelter south of Lake Knot City. The package you're carrying contains a network-ready Evo Devil unit. A special device that applies the principles of evolutionary biology to practical problems. Evo Devo. In conjunction with a chiral printer, it can recreate items from incomplete structural data. It's a prototype, but so far our trials have been successful. The client is a civilian. We call him the engineer, who's agreed to put the unit through validation testing for us. Be careful. The EDU is a delicate piece of equipment that must be handled with care. If you don't, it can and will break. Oh, and the engineer is second gen, born in the shelter. Not so good with people, but he's a whiz with machines. Or so I hear. Interesting. Second gen. The client is a first gen prepper. Old school. Been in and out of shelter since before the Death Stranding. Deliveries of his medication have fallen behind, though, and he's about to run out. There's just one case you need to bring, but there are multiple packs inside. Every dose counts, so you'd best handle it with care. While the client's life isn't in immediate danger, he's probably having a rough time. Don't keep him waiting, huh? <laughs> uh, every chance Kojima gets, he says, hey guys. Remember that game series that I am infamous for? Don't keep him waiting, huh? You'll be handing this one off to a guy we call the Craftsman. Repairs, modifications, you name it, he can do it. Makes weapons, too. Nothing lethal on account of his pacifism. In fact, if you give him something lethal, he'll turn it into something that isn't. A tool designed purely for self-defense. That's what the gun parts listed in the order are for. Make sure they get to him and no one else. Guns make bodies, and bodies make craters. While you're at it, I'd also like you to transport some blood bags and hematic grenades. You know, the ones you field tested against BTs and delivered to Lake Knot City. You'd like to dole them out to the local porters. We've got no reason to keep them to ourselves, so I figured we may as well oblige him. Wild. Okay, let's pick up all three of these. Now, uh, doesn't look like we've got, we don't have a bike. Uh, I don't know if we can like make one or maybe it's just, it, it might just be stored in our garage. Um, interestingly enough, but I think what I am going to actually try and do is we were using our bike in 
the eastern region when we were much more comfortable with the land I'd gone back and forth a bunch so it made like for, uh, traveling between those locations um, time and time again um, much less exciting so going through like on the bike makes things a breeze we're in a new location now so even if we have the bike in the garage I'm thinking we will journey on foot because I want to be able to explore and experience a new environment um, and actually like go through it so I'll probably make these deliveries on foot um, I need to uh, get another pair of the boots and put them on my boot clip um, and I will also get a ladder and I'll get a climbing anchor and I will get a PCC as well already got two container repair sprays, so I think that'll be fine. Let's make some stuff. I just chuck everything on my back until we go through it and then I auto arrange the cargo. So we get a good, good little, good little group. I've got some stuff to recycle as well. And we've got the memory chip to do as well. So let me do metals, resins, metals. And I'll de we'll deliver some, deliver some chiral. No, I can't, okay. Uh, can I do some chiral crystals? Give them a couple. I mean, I've got I've got a few. So it's a new location. Let's give them some give them some chiral crystals. Maximum of two hundred and twelve. Okay. Ta da! Thank you. Thank you. All right. Make delivery. Share memory chip data with William Lake. Just about given up on this. I owe you one. Okay, what did we just get? Memory chip data restored. The following data can now be viewed on your cufflinks. Big fish. Thank you. Ah yes. Big fish. Let's have a look. Oh, it's the movie Big Fish. <laughs> it's the movie Big Fish, okay. According to director Tim Burton, it was the death of his father that led him to make this highly personal piece uh, in which uh, young hero Will revels in his dad's fantastic tales, only to come to resent him as he grows old enough to realize that they're nothing but wild flights of fancy. The movie explores uh, the conflict and eventual reconciliation between a father who seemingly can't help embellishing the truth and a son who's desperate to understand him before it's too late. Big fish stories might be bad enough, but when you consider that Big Bang was a term originally intended to imply that the story of the origin of the universe was nothing but hot air, you start to think that all existence might be one tall tale. This is a good movie. Um, this is a good movie. I watched that that years and years and years ago, uh, so I don't really remember much about it at all. But um, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's a that's a Ewan McGregor movie. Pretty sure uh, that Ewan McGregor is the is the one in Big Fish, and I remember that being a big reason why I enjoyed it because Ewan McGregor is the best. Yes, he was the he was the guy, and. You know, naturally, it's a Tim Burton movie, so Helena Bonham Carter's in it as well. <laughs> uh, lovely. Got to make a got to make a movie with your wife in it at all times. Same way that uh, same with those Resident Evil movies. They're like, hey, I'm gonna make a movie, and I'm gonna make my wife the main character, and also Monster Hunter. Yeah, garage. No, uh, no vehicle available. Cool. So in a new region, we're either gonna have to find a bike, I guess. Uh, I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can fabricate or make a bike. Um, I'll look into that later. But regardless, I said that we're gonna, you know, we're gonna make the journey on foot, and the game is forcing us to do so anyway. So I'm perfectly fine with that as we explore a new, a new region. You're passing through mule territory. Move fast and quiet. As if they see you. If they catch you. To think that their parents were porters like you who risked life and limb to try and keep our country together. The 
and now their broken children carry on the work without any understanding of what it once meant. It's a ritual to them. The delivery. An insatiable addiction. And they'll be coming for you to get their next fix. Interesting. Maybe I should have ended up getting the uh, maybe I should have ended up getting the smoke cargo after all. But I think we'll I think we'll be okay to sneak around. So I can now see this place during the daytime. So I'm wondering if we that just takes us to the edge. We want to be going some post boxes. All right, we're gonna just hit the roots in a way like this. So I'm gonna plan out my route. We're gonna go right here, and then we're gonna go right here, and then we're gonna go right here. That's my pathway. Let's do it. Um, we need to go this way. BB is fond of this sign. I'm assuming, you know, it's the main mission. We're doing some walking. It'll probably pop open a nice little, nice little song for us to listen to as we walk past. Look at all these trucks. If only we could drive those. <laughs> The deliveries that we have aren't too heavy, so it's actually quite nice on foot. Drink some energy before we head out, you know? So this is one of those cans, so if I rest here, it grows it grows bigger over time. So I can choose to also rest here. Not a moment too soon. And we can just build them stronger and taller. I don't know how long we have to rest here for to actually make a difference or do anything. But uh there you go. I've done something. I've contributed to the pile, probably not. In the same way that if I wanted to, I could contribute to the, uh, contribute to the little piss pile. What is this here? What is this? Auto paver will rebuild a road when enough materials are supplied to it. So you can make roads? It needs chiral crystals, metals, 800 and 600 ceramics. So that's what ceramics are for. So if I go to Lake Knot City, I get all my materials and I could end up... Um, Repaving a road. That's so cool. I have to look into that uh, on my on my way back. We'll get the materials out. We could we could pave a road. There you go. I think all of these packages are for Lake Knot City, so I'll pick them up on my way back as well. Keep on keeping on. Using cargo as a weapon. We shouldn't need to do that. Oh, I don't have a mazer. I, I should have brought a mazer gun with me. That's right. We'll, we'll try and focus on just body slamming them and punching them in the face. And then we can also use a strand if we need. Now, where is mule? Oh, we're being scanned. So maybe this whole place is mule territory and that's why it's not glowing yellow. There we go. We've been pinged all the way over there. On some difficulty settings, it's possible to knock out an enemy in a single blow, but cargo takes damage, so I'm not going to do that. I'm really looking forward to exploring some new environments, but goddamn, maybe I should have brought a maser gun with me. Right, they, they've seen me. I'm hiding behind a thing. Oh no, they haven't seen me. They're good. Oh. 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 Quick. 
okay, they, they definitely know that where I am. Holy shit. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of them. wish that I could uh, I could pull the camera out manually if I wanted to I want to like just zoom out much more strafe strafe so that things can't get you I got it. Meant to do that. Meant to fall down. Otherwise, they would have uh, they would have continued to see me. See, I, my plan was perfect. They stopped chasing me once I left the chiral network uh, area, which is very interesting. It makes me wonder if uh, they can only scan me if I'm within the chiral network. There you go. Now they're going back to chilling out. It's a good ladder when you're on the run, isn't it? Look at this. So much. Alright, we've made it to the engineer. Our first stop. So we could like we can rebuild the roads and then that'd be that'd be great to drive our bike on. And then I'm assuming because, you know, same logic as when you're on a bridge, is it doesn't use any battery power when you're on like a built structure, so. I wonder if that translates to if that translates to roads as well. Evo Devo. The Evo Devo unit. Delivering cargo. Thanks. Sam Bridges, I presume? I've heard of you. The man trekking across the country trying to reconnect folks. I appreciate you bringing me this. I do. Times have been tough without Fragile Express to handle deliveries. Now let me just check the cargo. Huh. Wow. You took really good care of this. I'll let Bridges know how the V and V testing goes. Thanks again. So this is the second this is the second gen, dude. understand something. It's about Fragile. You might have heard she helped terrorists. That she didn't care who got hurt. But I'm telling you, that's gotta be bullshit. Her and her people put their lives on the line to get us what we needed. She's a hero through and through. Look, I was born in a shelter. The only world I've ever known is within these walls. So when people talk about America, I can't even begin to imagine it. But if that Cupid connects me to everyone else, I won't have to. So yeah, I want to join the UCA. I want to see what I've been missing. <clears throat> nice. Oh, that, that didn't take much convincing. Welcome to the club, buddy. We've got babies in pods. Cool private rooms. Grenade creating showers. Gravity defying necklaces. Hell yeah. Thank you. Engineers joins the UCA. Ooh, a power skeleton. In different colors. Smoke grenade, cool. And interview data required. Evo Devo unit prepper interview from the engineer and the Cairo Network 2. And 
with that, my standalone 3D printer is capable of chiral printing. Assuming it works, the Evo Devo unit should enable me to replicate all kinds of archived objects. We can rebuild America one piece at a time. In the meantime, I can use the network to see what's going on in the cities. Track mule and terrorist activity. It's like you brought me the whole wide world in that package. Thank you, Sam. Let's do business again. Oh, yeah. I've got a little something I'd like you to put through its paces. An assist unit I developed myself. Works perfectly in sim trials, but I need someone to test it out on solid ground. And if it makes your job a little easier, all the better. An assist unit? <gasps> it's a cardboard box. <laughs> He's giving you a pals gun. Here, here's an assist unit. A cardboard box. <laughs> I was going to make a joke that it was going to be... Sam, active skeletons attach to your legs and augment your physical capabilities. The one you've got there is a load-bearing AS, designed to reinforce your joints. Just wearing an AS will provide additional support, but you can also boost it to maximize its potential. Go ahead and take it for a spin. You won't be disappointed. Cool. I was going to make a joke that it was going to be, like when he's saying an assistant unit, I was like, that's going to be the Mark II from Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, a power skeleton, so that's going to replace our current ones, which is the support skeleton, right? Power skeleton reduces cargo's burden by, burden by bearing some of the weight. Cargo carrying capacity will be greatly increased and the battery power is available. Uh, equipped to use L3 for an additional boost to allow you to sprint while carrying loads that you'd originally struggle to lift at all. Uh, I'll remove... Ooh, we get 250 kilograms. Nice. Any cargo attached to the hips gets offloaded. Um, okay, which is the support skeleton, which I guess we will put in our private locker now, and the climbing anchor, which uh, I'll just chuck that on the tool rack. Oh, I've already got something on the tool rack. Never mind. All right, cool. Damn boy, look at those big ass legs next to our legs. Bizarre. Power skeleton. Thank you kindly. Come around again soon. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal. All right. That's one prepper way station. Two to go. Cool. All right. Uh, let's activate the terminal. I'm assuming there'll be some jobs here as well. Just some standard ones. So this is where, I, if I want to claim materials, oh, there's the mule area on the map now. I can claim these materials and go and build those roads at the auto pavers. So that's cool. Uh, standard orders that needs to go back to Lake Knot City. I'll do orders that will probably need to take us back there after I've done these three main ones. So let's head to my next destination over this way. Thanks. Actually. I wonder if well, we might end up in mule territory again, so what I might do, because we can fabricate stuff here, is... Large cloud of smoke when thrown, which is a good idea, uh, but I, I also might. Huh, I like that you can replay the briefing to do with the hematic grenade. I'm going to make a maser gun. Just one, please. Hey, being able to hold 250 kilograms, man, I could be a goddamn powerhouse. Turn me into a pack horse. Yeah, I wish there was a I wish there was an option to like maybe like pull the camera back a bit. Like, I'd love the option to kind of be a little more. Uh, be a little more zoomed out, you know. What's going on here? This is the generator symbol. Ah, oh, no, it's a generator sign. Okay. Someone's like, hey, put a generator here. Verifying ID. 
clear. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until departure. Cargo verified. Thank you. Samurai from Samurai and Half Life. Got Cyberpunk and Half Life here. It's really fine. So it's not, you can put like light bulb ones where it's like, oh, probably a good idea to put a generator here or something. So people can put like helpful signs on there. Interesting. Let's deliver this cargo that I just picked up because I am a delivery addict. Oh, hey, good to see you. You've done more for us than we had any right to ask. Don't think we don't know that. Thanks. Okay, so next destination is up that hill up there, and then we're heading that way, and then we'll circle on around to pick up some jobs to head back to Lake Knight City. Let's not do that. Love being able to just check out a new new environment. It looks it's much much similar to the previous area that we're in, but it's it's just called a you know be walking around a new place. It makes me wonder if like when we go further across the region if we'll end up in somewhere that's like a little less green maybe like somewhere like so we'll into some arid badlands or some like going through some rundown industrial sectors like I'm, I'm very interested to see what other uh, environments and things that we'll uh, we'll get to we'll get to experience we also have the mystery of you know um, what's going to be happening with Mads Mikkelsen's character you know are we going to see more of that developed outside of BB's memory flashes, like that kind of stuff? Very interested to see. Also, uh, Dead Man's taken like a little bit of a back seat. We haven't really heard or seen anything from him for a while. We mostly just hear from we mostly just hear from uh, Die Hard Man. Oh, we're in Mule territory again it's giving us that same tip. I'm going to use this watchtower. I kind of wish it wouldn't give us the same tip so frequently because it sits on the screen for quite a while. Damn, there's a whole bunch of them on the other side here. Whoa, hang on. They're driving in the truck. What? They're driving in a truck. Holy shit. Look at all the ceramics that they're holding on to as well. I love how I'm just literally letting them drive right to me because I want to look at this. Dude, they have like their own transport truck. What? Oh, we're going this way, so. Look at that. Stealing vehicles, approach the driver of a mule, mule vehicle to unseat them and take control. I can steal their vehicles? Dude. Get out of here. Grand Theft Auto. Sorry, I need this. Get in. Get in. Sam! Yes, I need to get in on this side. Go! We got a truck! Oh my god! 
<laughs> Go, Sam! Holy crap, yes. You can drive these ones. Oh, that's exciting. Get hijacked, dude. What are you expecting? Can you look? That means you must be able to load a whole bunch of cargo on this truck, but I guess maybe it would be like loose and you'd have to make sure you drive very carefully. Alright, how do we get up here? Maybe we can circle around. <laughs> oh wow, the battery drains really quickly on these if you decide to if you decide to boost. I need to make sure you got a bunch of generators, but we're in unfamiliar territory. Come on, you got this. I believe in you. You got this. I I believe in you. You can't... Can you jump in this? Like, you can jump with the... Nope. Can't jump... With this one. Oh, you can. There you go. You can jump. I just didn't want to. Okay. Oh, the... T the... The turning ability on, on these guys is not good. And the... Yeah, the batteries... The batteries on these trucks... Yeah, they're... Uh, they, they drain really quick. Track battery is, is running out, that's for sure. It's not very good at climbing a hill. The, the trike is uh, is vastly superior. It just, it's not letting me break. I'm trying to be an off-roading king and it's not working, no! <laughs> Well, if I can't use it, no one can! Oh god. If I can't use it, no one can. I can't even climb on it to use it as a... Oh, this is so, this is so funny. Wow, hello. Look at that. wonder if we'll be able to go out that way. I don't know be trekking through the snow. Or do I? Right. Let me just try and get up here. We were doing we were doing so well and then as soon as the truck came in I was like, hell yeah dude. Truck It was a, it was a bit exhilarating, you know, it was a bit of fun. At least we know we can hijack vehicles from mules. I think that's absolutely incredible. Not good. Huh. BB likes that. To is this, we made it to the Elder, first generation Elder. Active skeleton effects can remain active as long as you have battery remaining. Hey, he's got some free shoes. He's like, you guys need sandals just in case you don't have any boots. Next one. Prescription medicine. Delivering cargo. I've been expecting you. You are my lifeline. I've only managed to get this far thanks to porters, and you don't ask for anything in return. You have my gratitude. 
Let's see how's the package. Wow, this is great. Excellent job, thank you. I expect nothing less. Expect nothing less from the man with the same code name as the boss. That's right, boy. Ah, so you're here on behalf of Fragile Express. Yeah, Please yeah. tell me you put the terrorists behind you. When Fragile, the daughter of the founder, started associating with other couriers, things started getting scary around here. Rumors say that she caused the explosion at Middle Knot City. And there's a part of me that believes it. Of course, she could be just another one of their victims. Are you connecting the Cairo network? I don't mind a contract with Bridges, but I'm not going to join the UCA. Go ahead if you're fine with that. Okay. Maybe you already heard it from Fragile, but... Preppers who don't want to be a part of the UCA can still sign a contract with Bridges to join the network. They get to use our delivery services and other basic Cairo network infrastructure, much like our full members. Similarly, you'll be able to use their Cairo printing facilities to replenish your supplies. They are not, however, obligated to exchange data with us. So don't expect them to share intel or help with the development of new tech. In an ideal world, everyone would be a part of the UCA, of course. But failing that, we want everyone to at least be a part of the network. They can always change their minds after the fact. The Cupid will interface differently with the terminal depending on the type of contract. So connect your Cupid to confirm. Okay, no, that's that's really interesting. That's cool. It's not just like join us or suffer. It's like everyone can be part of the network and still gain access to facilities because we're trying to connect the whole world, you know. Or connect the United United Cities of America, at least for now. But um, maybe they can join again later. They just get, you know, they, there's some stuff that won't be included in that, so that's fine. Yeah. Elder has entered a contract with Bridges. Old man. Old man has joined. The company just got too big. In times like these, we should all keep it close and tight. That goes for couriers, too. Otherwise, we'll just make the same mistakes. Republics, federations, coalitions, states. Connecting all kinds of people together. It's just asking for trouble. Sorry, it's been a while since I last talked to anyone. Travel safe. See you around, then. The graphics on the characters' faces are so good, and it's and it's and it's not just the it's not just the main characters' faces that you see in cutscenes and stuff. Like everybody's like the the facial capture and stuff is incredibly detailed. Um, so we've actually got something to take to the engineer and then something to take to, uh, Lake Knot City. I'll pick up both of these. Because we'll make our way back through the engineer, um, on the way back to Lake Knot City anyway. We'll make our way back through. Order of time. And I need to get some and we'll get some stuff to take to the craftsman. Good job, Sam. That's two prepper way stations integrated into the Cairo network. Just one more left. Okay, so we're heading pretty much straight ahead, so we'll cross over the lake and then we'll get their jobs. Head back to the engineer and then head back to Lake Knot City. So there we go. Weapons restrictions lifted. We are running out of we are actually we are running out of batteries on our pants. There we go. I was literally just about to potentially build a generator, but someone has already left one out here. I need to charge my legs. 
Weapons description flipped. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Clear. Weapons detected. Weapons restrictions lifted. Check out over there. That was cool. I guess that's near the crater, right? Yeah. There's a crater and then a much, much bigger one. And there's the rainbow, so I think it's a mule location, so we're gonna be heading through both mule territory and potentially time fall on our way through to that crater, but look at that. I love that, like, right now we're looking at the bigger one, and then the, uh, sorry, the smaller one, the bigger one is the one behind it. It's crazy. I should be able to make it down here without the use of climbing anchor immediately. Just hold on. Maybe we might be upsetting BB a little bit. <laughs> Didn't mean it. BB just getting a little getting a little bit stressed. <laughs> You don't, you don't like going off the rails, kiddo? You don't like living life dangerously? You don't like taking, taking a bit of a risk? You don't, you don't like it? That's right, just suck on your thumb, my boy. That's right. Let's go. See, you're a, you're a brave little boy. If I land face first, you will take all of the damage, so I can understand your cause for concern. What the hell do they make the containers out of? Because it feels like they gotta be... They gotta make them, like, really strong. I think just fall off! <laughs> Did I just, like... Oh my god. I think I just, like, knocked it on the top of the thing. I, th I think that's really, like, realistic. And I, l I actually like how the game works with, like, handling its cargo. Like, balance is such an important thing. How you hold it have it on your shoulders. The fact that you can just like knock a goddamn rock and all of it tumbles off. It's very interesting as well. I could have definitely done a climbing anchor towards the end there. Okay. Let's equip the maser gun. Ooh, there's a vehicle in the mule territory, so we might actually be able to get in there and get their vehicles before they're being driven as well. Let's try that. Yeah, stealing vehicles. I got hit as I knocked him out. Kidding? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, 
of the spear just... Oh my god, that's clever. Okay. The spears can disable vehicles. How long is temporary? need to find out how long temporary is. That's uh that's there we go. Okay, that's that's quite a quite a bit of time to get disabled. There you go. This music is so good. I love the I love the music when you're engaged in like a combat scenario. It's actually really cool. It's a bit muddy here. I hope we're not going to enter some time fall, but I think we're close to a structure. Oh, that's another mule camp. Oh no, this is where we need to be. Look how close we are to that. Beginning scan. Scan mm. bridges ID. Fragile experience nice. ID verified. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until the punch. Cargo verified. Hand carried cargo in a vehicle. Stand next to a vehicle uh, and release hand home cargo to place on a cargo bed. Yeah, cool. So we can chuck stuff in there if we want. That's awesome. Drive the cargo on. I'd rather keep it on my back in case I have to uh, emergence, uh, in an emergency just leave. Delivering cargo. You're not with Fragile Express, are you? Oh, I get it. Bridget is using their IDs to complete the delivery. Well, good work, son. I'll take that off your hands. Package looks... Brand new. Wow. Been a while since I've seen cargo in such good shape. Thank you kindly. I know it couldn't have been easy. That's right, I definitely didn't drop any cargo. I didn't drop anything. What's your angle anyway? Everyone knows Fragile was behind the attack that wiped out Middle Knot City. Only a damn fool trusts that terrorist to deliver shit now. But here you are, filling in. Keeping her business alive for her, am I right? I swear. Can't trust anyone these days. And don't try sweet talking me onto your little network. You know why there's been so many terrorist attacks recently? Because you all pissed them off with your talk of reuniting the country. Join the ECA. I may as well paint a bullseye on my shelter. Just keep my deliveries coming. We'll get along just fine. I don't need any trouble. Though I will say. I appreciate these hematic grenades of yours. Quality work, gotta admit. Not the sort of equipment the UCA ought to keep to itself. There's a lot of freelance porters operating in these parts, after all. If I could churn these out by the boatload and gear up those folks, now you're good people. I can see that. And you brought my order like I asked. Join the UCA, bitch. More than that for me to agree to what you're asking. Chiral Network is a big step. But, if you could prove to me Bridges is an organization I can trust, hmm, how about this? Do another run for me. I'll put the details on the terminal there. Yeah, makes sense. Order available. Please access What's this terminal? Where are we going? Into the crater. Love it. We are recovering a toolbox from the crater. Amazing. That's gonna be fun. Not far from Middle Knot City, you'll find the ruins of an old shopping mall. They predate the Death Stranding. The craftsmen used to live there. Until terrorists organized a void out or two and BT started showing up. Needless to say, the craftsmen had to move house in a hurry. Grabbed what little he could and left most everything else behind. Which is where you come in. 
He wants you to go and get his old toolkit and bring it back to the shelter. His old home's locked up tight, but he'll open it remotely for you when you set out. Place is crawling with BTs, though. No one in their right mind would even try to pull this off. But if you can, then the old man might finally realize Bridges is only trying to help. Goddamn. Well, I'll take the job. The toolkit you're looking for ought to be in my old shelter. It's been tagged, so shouldn't have any trouble finding the place. I'll unlock it remotely once you get there. Oh, and take some of those hematic grenades you brought with you. Nothing you'll want more when those BTs put your back against the wall, right? Here's hoping it won't come to that. And some porter boots as well. Oop. So we have a new job to recover the toolbox, but I am going to um, I'm going to finish up the current deliveries that I have because I don't want to be holding onto cargo when I go into a goddamn crater. Uh, so I'm going to head back to the engineer and then head back to Lake Knot City uh, and then then see where we where we end up from there. I think actually we do have some mail and some data to go through. So let me just check this because uh, we got an email from William Lake all about preppers. We made rounds of the local preppers when I first arrived here with Bridges 1. There should be some interviews floating around that the records team transcribed. Take a look when you get the chance. We were mainly sounding out the situation on the ground and trying to convince them to join the UCA, of course, but we already suspected they weren't the type to follow the herd. Why else would they be out here? Still, we found the odd community-minded soul among them. Not all were holed up in shelters by choice. Some were running from something. Others had just been born into the life. Getting the few we did to throw their lot in with the UCA was a pain in the ass, though. It didn't help that the chiral network wasn't up and running back then, either. All we could do was put the parts in place and promise that they were going to work someday. And now they finally do, thanks to you. Could be the skeptics finally uh, might finally come around now that we can show as well as tell. You keep up the good work, you hear? Get us all back on the grid. We've got some data, so we've got a couple of interviews. Prepper interview from the engineer two years ago. My horizons aren't exactly broad. That said, I'm not completely cut off from the outside world. I knew what Bridges was, and that they were trying to rebuild America, but when you're living down here, it's hard to see how that's got anything to do with you and yourself, am I right? My folks hold up in this shelter after the Death Stranding, had a kid and raised him in their slice of paradise, and together we lived off whatever Fragile Express was kind enough to bring our way. They told me tales about the good old days, but I've never had much of an imagination. Couldn't see how a country long gone was any concern of me and mine. As far as I figured, if Fragile Express was happy to keep bringing us stuff, we didn't need anybody else, and we certainly didn't need America, whatever that even was. But then one day, I was looking at a part for this machine my dad put together. He was an engineer too, and I noticed something. It said, made in the USA, right there in tiny print. Got me, got me to thinking that America might not exist anymore, but the stuff Americans built is still around, making our lives a little bit easier, even now. You could say the old country lives on uh, in its works, kind of like how my folks live on in me. They uh, died a while back. Anyway, if they're American, I guess that makes me American too, and maybe the shelter are part of it all. Once I realized that, I started pouring my heart into building stuff to help you guys put the country back together. I've got the Cairo Network 2 from Hartman, three years ago before the first ex uh, expedition's departure. In a way, the Cairo Network makes use of the beach to allow us to travel through time. See, sending large amounts of data takes large amounts of time, as you'd expect, but the thing about beaches is, well, time doesn't pass the same way uh, in them as it does out here. Might not even pass at all. Uh, think about how light... Think about how the light from the stars in the sky we see was produced thousands of thousands of years ago. Routing data through the beach is like jumping to a point earlier in that journey, thereby cutting it shorter. Much shorter. Just imagine, massive amounts of data transferred almost instantaneously. That's what we're trying to achieve with the chiral network, in a nutshell. In theory, the network allows us to reconstruct old data that would otherwise be lost and to do so with fragmented resources. Using what's known as Evodevo analysis, we could take the finger bone of a dinosaur, say, and extrapolate from that not only the dinosaur's form, but its composition, internal, external, even its thought processes to a degree. Anything's possible with chiral computing. In other words, we won't just be able to reunite a nation, we'll be able to reclaim everything we lost in the Death Stranding. 
more even. Theoretically, if we could go back as far as the birth of the planet and beyond, um, and thanks to the beach, we'll be able to compile all that data in one place and reduce the processing time for even the most complex analysis to effectively zero. Thanks, Mama. That's, that's bizarre. All right, the Evo Devo unit from Hartman. It seems a rather significant breakthrough has been achieved back at headquarters. They've successfully integrated an Evo Devo unit into a chiral printer. In case you're not familiar with the term, Evo Devo refers to evolutionary developmental biology. Your genes, mouse genes, dinosaur genes, the genes of every living being are virtually identical, and yet we develop into such radically different organisms. Thus, a question arises. Why did such disparate life arrive from the self-same building blocks? Evo Devo was the field of study that sought to solve that mystery, to lay bare the secrets of evolution. Before the advent of Evo Devo, it was thought that in order to reconstruct a dinosaur, we would require a sample of its DNA. However, thanks to this technology's ability to extrapolate from existing data, we could, with the correct stimulus, grow a dinosaur from the DNA of any living organism. We could, in essence, recreate the process by which dinosaurs evolved from primeval life forms. An Evo Devo unit applies these same principles to the problem of information and object reconstruction. With the help of the chiral network, we may take incomplete data, and indeed incomplete objects, and reproduce their complete forms. This data can then be fed into a chiral printer. Uh, voila, partial data yields yet finished product. The tech isn't viable for everyday use just yet, but when it is, it will be of incalculable benefit to our research and bring our reconstruction efforts forward by a matter of decades. Your genes. Genome soldiers. There you go. Some more interviews for you. I'm going to hop in our vehicle and take a drive back to the engineer and uh, Lake Knot City, um, and we'll uh, we'll see we'll see where we end up from there. We'll uh, complete these jobs and then look into heading into the crater. We have a road to Lake Knot City. I mean, it's kind of all going up in the air though. I mean, we have a road. That's cool. Check me out, Mom! Driving on the road! Oh! Road is closed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay, then. Well. About that. I wonder if anyone's watching. Hmm. Can I... If we do a little speed boost, I might be able to safely flawless. There we go. And there's a generator right across the way. Oh, it is raining a bit. How deep is this water? Can I, am I going to make it to the generator before this truck battery runs out? Ugh. So was the bridge built by? person or we have to finish it look at that that's really cool it's literally like it's literally like melting away at the bottom though look at that that's so weird it's in the process of being 3d printed oh i guess we'll go i'll try and follow the lights because this looks like because i think this is the engineer over this way so these are all the pathways that you could use to build a road if you wanted. Oh, there's more road over there. So it, I think it's built into the game. There's, these aren't like other people's structures yet, but it's up to me and many others. Um, up to me and many others to build these bridges and to complete them, I guess. That's so cool. All right. Hopefully there's a generator with this engineer. I mean, there should be, right? He's literally an engineer. Nope, I might have to build my own generator here. There you go, I can build it right here. Where that sign is. How about that? Let's do that. We've got a PCC, I think. So... Let's build a generator here. PCC. I want...
The generator, please. Beep. Three D printing is the future, guys. Three yeah, D printing is actually amazing. You know what I really love about like what three D printing can do is if you just get the if you get the design specs, if you get blueprints, if you get the original like what needs to be made, you can just remake things that don't exist anymore or that are super hard to come by. Like even like car parts and pieces for like toys or figures or like stuff that you just need to like fix and repair things like the the capabilities that 3d printing has is so fascinating to me and i have i have friends who have um i have friends who have 3d printers and they you know make their own little things but i, I just think like the the possibilities of that is is amazing and we're seeing we're seeing that like fully realized in this game of like the power of uh, futuristic 3D printing through, you know, going? chiral technology, I guess, you know, but that's, that's so cool. But I should be able to work with it. Sorry, bud. It took, it took 32% damage, but it was still less than 40, so we're fine. <laughs> Not every delivery can be perfect. Please access delivery terminal for further information. Oh, actually, I need his, uh, I need the job from here for the one that goes back to Lake Knot City, don't I? That one. Oh, there's also one that goes right to the Elder. They keep sending themselves things, and they're making me do the job. We won't pick that up yet. We'll pick up the one for Lake Knot, because that's what I need. That's where I'm headed. Custom-made tools. Order assigned. We got some mail. Let's have a read. William Lake, you've got to go the extra mile. Thanks again, Sam. You really came through for us today. Now, you can tell me to mind my business if you like, but I couldn't help but notice that you've been getting better delivery evaluations lately. Looks like you know uh, what you stand to gain if you go the extra mile. Or do you? Providing that extra bit of service to make people happy, the miscellaneous grade is the most important part of the whole evaluation system for you, right? It's only at level, what, 51 right now? <laughs> Speaking of happy, I just remembered the first time you came here after crossing ground zero. True, successfully uh, delivering cargo to its destination is your job first and foremost, but people are demanding. They don't just want their shit carried from A to B, they want a little more, you know, special treatment, something that'll put a smile on their face. Hey, I get it. It's a lot more work for you tracking down lost cargo, returning items to their rightful owners, and it's not really part of the drop description either. But you better get used to it because standards are changing and people are only going to expect more from their porters. Anyway, it's usually worth your while. Going above and beyond is a good way to pla rack up plenty of likes. Then hell, sometimes you end up doing it without realizing, without even realizing you did. Yeah, I'm serious. Next time you complete an order, take a closer look at your results. See if there isn't a symbol next to your likes which indicate that you got them for performing tasks related to the miscellaneous grade. You might be surprised. It may all seem like a hassle right now, Sam, but having a good miscellaneous grade will get you more likes, and you can never have too many likes. Port Not City. Giving it everything. Hey, Sam. Was thinking I ought to report back to you on how we're doing over here. First things first, the chiral network blew my mind. It's so, so much better than what I was expecting. The latest news from Capital Knot, way station dispatches, and distro center updates in real time without any lag whatsoever. What's more, we can now rely on generator power to keep us online. That alone's a real game changer. We can send and receive all kinds of supplies too, even without the help of porters like you. As long as we've got the raw materials, the chiral printer can provide us with most anything we need. You should see the skyline here, cranes all over the place. The city's turned a corner. If you ask me, to be honest, it almost brings a tear to my eye to see how far we've come. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. The important thing is that it's all going to be much better than expected. Catch you later, Sim. And Jake Wynn, tell Amelie we're true believers. Dear Sam, how's it going? Still heading west? We're rooting for you. We were part of the second group, so we never got to speak with Armelie face to face. Caught the occasional hollow message, but that was about it. Still, every little bit helped to keep us going. She's just like her mother. Tough, clever, easy on the eye too. Won't lie and say I didn't notice. Uh, but what really resonated with us was that fire she carries, that conviction. Same as Bridget. Any one of us would have laid down our lives in service to her vision. I suppose this is all a long-winded way of saying you ought to move on and meet her like we never got to. And when you do, tell her we're all still believers in the cause and in her. 
and her mother. You'll do that, won't you? Yes, Jake Wind. Just you telling me that you uh, are attracted to my sister <laughs> in the game. Thank you. Well done. Alright, back to Lake Knot City. And out of this time fall. This is such a design flaw of the vehicle to not have a roof over the top. When it rains, I get my stuff damaged. <laughs> yeah, we got a bridge here though. It's like, God damn it. Is this road closed or is it a complete road that I can take? Ah, oh, hang on, I built a generator and then I didn't even use it! Hold on a minute, I need to charge my... truck! Fields generator, refuses to charge truck, leaves. Charge me that bad boy. Like I said, that, that turning circle on the trucks is rough. Love looking at all like the unique environments and stuff where we see like stuff like the the trucks and cargo containers that look like they've just been like they're just wasting away and rusting. Yeah, it's a complete bridge, baby. Let's go. We can go all the way. This is so cool. There's actually bridges and highways. Just skip over all the mules, please. That's very cool. And then I, you know, if I if I need to myself, I can also put the materials on this thing. There you go. Okay, so more materials are getting put in there. So, you know, other other players are also building the roads. We're all putting we're all putting the work in. Oh, look, these these trucks that we can't drive have better they've got a rooftop. They're, they've got more coverage. Of course they do. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. All clear. Welcome to Sam for the bridges. Got some cargo for you. Perfect condition. I expect nothing less. Yeah, miscellaneous grade 51, baby. Master mover. Cargo condition grade 20. Harder for you to lose consciousness. Until the next delivery, then. Sweet. Good work. And no orders here. There you go. All right. Good stuff. All right. I think what I'll be doing now is we actually are going to bring this episode to a close. Uh, it's been a it's been a longer one, and it's been uh, a lot of fun going to a, a new area, getting a lot of cool cutscenes as well. So some decent story content that I've uh, that I'm a big fan of. Uh, next episode we are going to go into uh, into the crater, so we'll get this toolkit do a job for the craftsman and we'll see where we go from there. I'm assuming we'll be going out this area. We've got the snowy mountains to maybe trek over. That's going to be really interesting. Uh, we will we will have to check that out. We'll read that mail next time as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Death Stranding. I'll see you next time.